Senator, Senator King. You want to turn on your mic? Thank you. Thank you for your testimony and your, uh, your stamina today. First, I should uh, tell you that uh, in an earlier hearing today, Secretary Panetta was uh, testifying before the Armed Services Committee, and in answer to a question, he strongly endorsed your nomination. And uh, I think the record should, should show that, we, that uh, Secretary Panetta was uh, uh, very uh, complimentary of your capabilities and experience. Uh, secondly, and this isn't really a question, but uh, it's, it's incredibly important for the CIA to be as open, to be totally open with this committee. The reason is that there's no one else watching. Typically in, this, in, this, in our country, we have the public is involved, the press is involved, there are a lot of people that have access to information of what the Department of Commerce is doing or the Department of State. This is a unique situation where this committee and the comparable committee in the, in the House are the only places that are really paying attention in terms of our separation of power. So it, it, it's not just nice to have that kind of openness. I think it's, it's, it's critically important, and I, I hope you subscribe to that view. Absolutely, I do, Senator. Uh, just briefly, and, and uh, I think uh, uh, Senator Warner touched on this, uh, going forward, uh, there needs to be some serious discussion with the Department of Defense about where where the CIA ends and the Department of Defense starts in terms of counterterrorism activities, uh, operations, and, and I don't want to, I don't need to pursue that, but I think that's, I think uh, Senator Warner raised an important point because in this day and age, we just can't be duplicating a whole set of, of capabilities and priorities and officers and, and procedures and everything else. I take it you've subscribed to that. I do agree, Senator, and I look forward in a, in a closed session to talking to you about some specific areas where I really do believe that defense CIA relationship and integration of effort is critically important to the safety of this and security of this nation. So again, redundant, uh, um, mindful of not having any type of redundant capabilities that are waste resources, we need to make sure that we can, we can leverage the capabilities that exist in both organizations for the good of this country. And the, the area I want to spend a little bit of time on is the drone policy, in particular as it relates to American citizens. Uh, there's a lot of law and history involved in our system of checks and balances. Uh, James Madison famously in the 51st Federalist said if, if, uh, men and women, if, if people were angels, we wouldn't need a government, and if the government was run by angels, we wouldn't need checks and balances. He concluded that angels were in a short supply then as they are today, and therefore we need these kinds of checks and balances. Uh, the Fifth Amendment is pretty clear. No deprivation of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And we're depriving American citizens of their life when we target them with a drone attack. Now, I understand that it's under, I understand that it's under military circumstances. These are enemy combatants and all of those kinds of things. But I would like to suggest to you that you consider, and Madam Chairman, I'd, I'd like to suggest to the committee that we consider a FISA-type process a FISA court type process where an American citizen is going to be targeted for a lethal strike. Uh, and I understand you can't have co-commanders in chief, uh, but having the executive being the, the prosecutor, the judge, the jury, and the executioner all in one is very contrary to, th to, to traditions and the laws uh, of this country, and uh, particularly in a situation where there's time. Uh, if a, a soldier on a battlefield doesn't have time to go to court, but if you're planning a strike over a matter of days, weeks, or months, there is an opportunity to at least go to some uh, outside of the executive branch uh, body, like the FISA court, in a confidential uh, and top secret way, make the case that this, this American citizen is an enemy combatant, and uh, at least that would be, uh, that would be some check uh, on the activities of the executive. I have great confidence in you. I have great confidence in President Obama. Uh, but the, all the lessons of history is it shouldn't matter who's in charge uh, because we should have procedures and processes in place uh, that will protect us no matter who the people are that are in the particular positions. How do you react to this uh, suggestion? Senator, I think it's certainly worthy of discussion. Um, our tradition, our judicial tradition, is that a court of law is used to determine one's guilt or innocence for past actions, uh, which is very different from the decisions that are made um, on the battlefield, 
um, as well as actions that are taken against terrorists. Because none of those actions are to determine past guilt for those actions that they took. The decisions that are made are to take action so that we prevent a future action, so we protect American lives. That is an inherently executive branch function to determine, and the, the Commander-in-Chief and the Chief Executive has the responsibility to protect the welfare, well-being of American citizens. So the concept I, I, I understand, and we have wrestled with this in terms of whether there can be a FISA-like court, whatever. FISA-like court is to determine exactly whether or not there should be a warrant for you know, certain types of activities. You know, um, it's analogous to, a, to a going to a court for a warrant, probable it, cause. In right, exactly. But the actions that we take on the counterterrorism front, again, are to take actions against individuals where we believe that the intelligence base is so strong and the nature of the threat is so grave and serious, as well as imminent, that we have no recourse except to take this action that may involve a lethal strike. I, I completely agree with you, and I understand the dilemma, and I'm not trying to suggest anything that would limit our ability to, to, to take action on behalf of American citizens. I would just feel more comfortable if somebody other than a member of the executive said, yes, we agree that the evidence is so strong, et cetera, as you stated it in the, in the Hamdi decision, uh, uh, Sandra Day O'Connor, he had a wonderful statement, a state of war is not a blank check for the president when it comes to the rights of the nation's citizens. That's right, and that's why I do think it's worthy of discussion, and the point particularly about due process really needs to be taken into account because there's not a different standard as far as if a U.S. citizen joins al-Qaeda, you know, in terms of the intelligence base or whatever, but American citizens, by definition, are due much greater due process than anybody else by dint of their citizenship. So I think this is a very worthwhile discussion. I look forward to talking to the committee and others about it. What's that appropriate balance between executive, legislative, and judicial branch responsibilities in this area? I appreciate your consideration and, uh, again, appreciate your testimony today, and thank you for your service to the country. Madam Chairman, I yield back my time.